welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next session on this efficient procurement procurement implementation actually so let me go and share this screen <laughs> So there are six methods of approval. One is, uh, the first one is what is auto approval. Uh, the second one is uh, individual worker. The third one is approval group. And the fourth one is uh, job level approvals. And then the fifth level is supervisor level approvals. So we have completed all the five. Now we are into the final one. It's called position level approvals. So for the position level approvals, uh, you have to have what, if you go to the my client groups, and then if you go and then go on the person management for the position level approvals, Every employee must have a position as well as the line manager defined properly. Otherwise, it will not come at all. And I go there, go to the person management. Let me call him employee. My first employee is what? EMP1. The last name, comma, first name, that is the way in which we have to perform query now. Fine. So you must have the position over here now. And positions can be done only via person management report. Go there. No other way. So click on it, edit. I'm going to edit it. And then have a look at it now. So I'm now opening it. I'm not editing it actually. I'm just opening it up. <clears throat> I've already given this now. So you can now see that this employee has been given a position. Position can be given only by a person management and then you must have the what's called the role of uh, human resource specialist. And remember, everybody will not be given every role. Otherwise, you have to identify who is having it. You have to talk to the project manager and then identify who is having that role of human resource specialist. And then that guy only can edit it and then update it actually. On the person management, you can edit it and update it. Otherwise, it's not possible. Whereas the line managers can be given by a, if you see the line managers, my direct reports and managers. This can be given by our manage users. Manage users task, we can very well say who is your line manager. But positions can be given only via this. Right? Positions for which you must have the access to the, this particular role. And then if you're not having a role, uh, uh, identify the person who is having a role and then ask him to update the position actually. Right? Ask him to update the position. Then but if the employee itself is created by HRMS, no need to worry at all. If HRMS, HRMS is also installed, they will not take care of everything. Right? No need to worry. So I have three employees, EMP1, EMP2, EMP3. Everybody is having a position and then one is reporting to two, two is reporting to three, three is not reporting to anybody. He's the top person in the hierarchy actually. Fine, that way it's working. So everything is now in place actually. So we'll now go on and configure our uh, position approvals actually. So this is the first one. And then we'll now configure the approvals. I will now go to that one. I will now go there. I'll now go to the setup. And this is a task actually. Fine. Any task can be done by the application implementation consultant. If you have a role, you can very well perform the task. The tasks are all setup tasks, remember. Every task is a setup task. And so we can very well perform the setups. Now. Fine. Click on it, go there. <coughs> so click on search. It's called manage position percentage tree percentage. So manage position tree is the one. Fine. Click on it. No, no, no. You're going to get a tree, position tree. It is almost exactly similar to what we have in EBIS. Right? There is not uh, much of a difference between EBIS and then uh, your fusion, actually. So we'll now go on and create a position tree actually, and click on create tree. There is one addition which is there. Right? Uh, since the introduction of the KFF in uh, fusion, uh, we have instance and then uh, what happens? You have a, what, you have a, what happens? A structure and then an instance of a structure. So similarly here also everywhere, this uh, double concept has been introduced in fusion actually. Right? We don't have such a concept in there. So when you make a KFF, you simply, what happens? You do the compilation directly, fine. Right? You, you can save and compile here. Uh, we have to create an instance of a structure. Similarly here also, we have to make an instance of a position tree, you know, fine. That has been introduced over here now. So 302 underscore, I will not say pass underscore. Position tree is the one I'm not doing it. So take a copy of it. I'm not going to get the position. Click on the code. So if it is not coming, you paste it. Otherwise, wait for some time and then see whether it is not coming up automatically or not. It will not come up automatically. It is a tree. After specifying the definition, you have to go and then specify the labels and then specify access rules. Now. So if you have any icon, you can even upload the icon image also. Otherwise, not required. To that. So you click on the next and then we'll know traverse on the tree actually. No specific labels. Nothing to be specified over here. Fine, everything is there actually. Is a HCM position hierarchy tree structure actually. Fine. Yeah, the tree structure is maintained only with the HCM human capital management. And then you will be getting a shared access to all these things even if you don't have any license for HCM actually. Fine. So you'll be given. Uh, if HCM is not licensed, you can very well create the jobs. You can very well create the positions also. That is possible. But you cannot. What happens? The sanction the leave of employee. You cannot promote an employee. You cannot appraise an employee. So HCM specific task you cannot perform if there is no license. But uh, the common task between procurement and HCM can be done even if HCM is not licensed. Actually. So click on next one. 
for the specific specific access rules no fine what you want so is what is and then here also nothing to be said and click on submit by which the position tree gets created and click on submit no fine the position tree gets created so it is not done no fine the position tree is now created and normally it will be on a common set no fine uh, set assignments sir people will be having a fancy to assign uh, multiple sets plus b please avoid from a supply chain perspective this sort of a security is not at all required and so and so wherever possible you always create everything on a common set right and then uh, this the different sets will be done only with the hcm team the financial team the project team etc etc but not with the supply chain supply chain do not need any such security at all but since uh, the set is uh, basically a mandatory requirement as far as the saas compliance saas compliance is concerned so oracle has introduced it and then uh, just because they introduced it try do not try to use it because my students have got struck because of uh, they assigned to uh, different sets and then uh, they were unable to perform all the activities actually fine it will not stop you from doing all that i will not click on done no fine come on away so once when it's done what happens you always go there so let me always you can hear what happens uh, uh, these things need to be what happens uh, uh, signed out and signed in no fine sign out and sign in <clears throat> this activity after performing it you please sign out and sign in and then again afterwards you go for the position tree actually now you are going to get a position tree now so go there go to this place and then click on it and then go to the setup and maintenance so go to the setup and maintenance and then go right click on it check on search <coughs> and here i'll now say manage better you sign out and sign in because sometimes it doesn't work at all properly and it takes time also to what about the system to sense the changes actually now select this and then for this what happens we are now going to get a position tree and go to actions and then create a tree version actually so the tree version is nothing but a instance of a tree actually and create a tree version a tree a blank tree has been created now we are going to create a tree version now and click on create tree version and keep your cursor on the appropriate place and do it so the tree name is a position tree fine go that to connect i will now say 02 underscore <clears throat> pass underscore version 1 i will now create so i am no position tree version i am now creating it so take off it and then for the description now paste over here and then click on the note and paste over here and then effective start date you normally give yesterday now fine because sometimes what happens is today is what it, it doesn't work immediately actually so make the start date as what yesterday so i will now say from 2 onwards i am starting it fine i have now given yesterday as date so i am in third uh, what happens i am now uh, the third now fine i am now giving second now and then effective end date fine uh, sometimes it is not required and then uh, sometimes it doesn't work properly so always give a effective end date also fine i will now give what happens a yeah, date which is a very high fine so something after 2 years i am now giving effective end date <coughs> so give a date like this now so it is not done of any forms so now it is all done it is a two step process in the tree fine we have to click on next one i will now go to the specific the notes so click on the specific notes your blank tree version is now created successfully the confirmation message has come up and it's a blank tree now i am now going to say who is the top position in my tree actually and click on plus now i am going to find out the top position you can plus now let me add click on the plus and then here what happens i am going to make a search now fine leave everything as such and then click on search directly so click on search i am now going to make a search <coughs> so here i will now put t02 and then make a search now remember employee names are only going to start on last name comma first name whereas the remaining will be starting on this this fashion only so i am going to say who is the top person i will not choose it so in my tree structure t02 ngr manager ngr mechanical is the top person fine select it and click on add tree node so click on add tree node fine the tree node gets added fine so don't submit it fine keep on doing so to the manager mechanical who are all the people who are reporting and if you do a, again a plus it will be going to the root actually fine first is select it select it and then afterwards click on plus one fine you are now going to create a, a next position below this position so choose your position over here and then click on plus and then i am now going to create a next position over here fine click on search again fine go there so t02 is the one <clears throat> so click on search now fine we are searching for it so is the assistant manager mechanical you go to add tree node and click on add tree node so it comes below this node actually. so if you expand it you can now see that it has now come now the junior manager is reporting to assistant manager mechanical so choose the appropriate highlight the appropriate one and then click on plus fine if you don't do it it will be doing everything on the root fine right? so build the structure very properly as per the end client's uh, way of working actually fine we are going to map the way in which the end client is working and accordingly we have to create the structure actually so select it and then i am now going to and then junior manager mechanical is going to report to assistant manager mechanical 
I think I'm lost my mind. Don't go there. <clears throat> and then click on search again. Don't do anything and then click on search again directly. <clears throat> and then here I say T02. <clears throat> and then click on search. So it is a junior manager mechanical and select and then click on add tree node and select and then click on add tree node. So we are now completed the structure creation, the, the hierarchy creation. This is exactly similar to like this. And then here, what happens? You can even delete everything except the top. It's fine. This you can delete at a later point of time. This is not reporting it. We can very well delete it. But the top cannot be removed. The top cannot be removed, remember, in a structure actually. And then you submit it. So by which what happens? The position is not done. And Eve is also what happens? The top position cannot be created. You only have to create a new position tree actually. If the top person has got changed, you have to change it. You have to create a new one. So here also the same concept. So the top position cannot be changed on a tree. The remaining positions can be changed, whereas the top position cannot be changed like this. Eve is basically. So click on submit now. By which our uh, position tree is not done. Uh, for tree, fine is now created successfully. Tree version is now created successfully. Now, what we have to perform is we have to perform an audit. Now, I click on done again. And afterwards, what happens is you know, see this sort of error message is coming because of which what happens is some problem is happening for me. It's not coming up properly. I don't know why this error is coming actually. Let me log and log in now. This error is coming. I'm now facing this problem for the past three, four trainings actually. It is not coming up fine. There is some mistake somewhere or I have to, there may be some prerequisites for position. I'm not exactly understanding that now. Click on it. Uh, on position tree, uh, do we have any mechanism or report like, uh, I mean, this will notify yeah. when it will be ended? Like yeah. we have, we had given the end date, right? End date, okay, fine. It won't give any automatic notification. You only have to configure the notifications actually. With the help of technically can configure it. Like alerts, now fine. You have Oracle alerts in EBS, now fine. Here also we have alerts. So we can even configure those alerts and then so the appropriate people will be informed actually upon before end date. Some four days before we can very well do it. But uh, you have to take the help of technical actually. Okay. Go there. So manage position break. So manage position break. Once again, let me reply. Now select it, and then here, what happens? You expand it. You can now see the tree position. The tree position is in a draft action. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to perform what, uh, we have to perform an audit action. We have to perform an audit. So we have to perform an online audit action. And then go to actions, and then go to set status, and then make it as active. So once when you want to set it as active, fine, the system will now prompt an audit action. It has to perform an audit. So actions set status to active. You go to go for active, and you have to change the status from draft to active. You're going to set the status to active. So it goes to the next screen for an audit now. Fine. So you perform an online audit. Fine. Click on online audit. So click on audit. So since we have not done any mistakes in our uh, jobs and positions, the audit will pass. Now. Fine. Click on online audit. I'm going to perform an online audit. <clears throat> and if you have made any mistakes on your jobs and positions, it will not show you all the errors over here. <clears throat> My audit completed successfully is now combined. There are 14 validations it has gone through. Thank you. Okay, now fine. <clears throat> so 14 validations are coming. And you can now see the audit results are also coming up here. <clears throat> the audit results are also coming. So it's all done now. Fine. So all these things are done. Fine. Click on done and then you can now see the audit. Fine. Click on done. <clears throat> Now you can see it has become active. So it has to become active. So it has now become active. And click on done now. And click on done. <clears throat> now again, this error is coming. This error is now causing me some problems actually. The position is not sensitive at all in the system. I don't know what to do now. Click on now. now what I do is I will not go there. Uh, I will not try to perform an LDAP also. I'll go to the tools. <clears throat> and then I will now run the LDAP actually. <clears throat> Let me run an end up now. So go there. Schedule new process and then let me run an end up. What is this? 
same way. Okay. So here we go there. I will load on the LDAP. LDAP and then give it app. <coughs> I am not offering any LDAP. So retrieve latest LDAP changes. So this is going to sync all your setups with the transaction system. So go there. Retrieve LDAP to the Frank. Okay, no, I'm not stopping it. So click on submit. So we'll now wait for the concurrent to complete and then uh, we are now going to go for the next topic also. Fine, it will take some time. So in the meantime, what happens is we'll now go for the next topic is called accounting. We are going to go for the uh, accounting now. Fine. We are going to begin accounting, not uh, the complete accounting. The charge accounting, we are going to begin now as the next topic. So we'll now wait for this and then afterwards, after this is completed, we will now test the position now. So we are now going to begin our charge accounting on this. Fine. I will not explain the theoretical part of it. I will not go to the patient procurement documentation. And then here, I will not go to the PDP process. PDP process. So the purpose of procurement module is what? To reduce the spend action. Spend reduction can be achieved only when you know how much you have spent. So when you make a PO, fine, there is no accounting at all. No accounting takes place upon PO. Once you make a gate is up, the receiving inspection account is it on the data side, and then the contra entry for the inspection is what accrual accrual will be hitting on the data side. So these two accounting entries are made upon gate receipt structure. And then when, when you deliver it to the inventory, what happens? Is these three entries will be made. So you'll be having a PPV getting hit only when the uh, uh, items uh, cost is uh, what happens standard cost. If it is going to be an average cost, this entry will not be hit. That you're going to see it later now actually. So it's not here. And then what happens? The inventory middle value and then the charge account. Fine, both are hit actually. Fine. The charge account as well as the inventory valuation account, both are hit simultaneously upon delivery into the inventory. Fine, yes. Don't get so this is the account which is now coming to the picture now. And then the contra entry is what receiving inspection gets knocked off. So after these two stages of accounting, the balance entries are what accrual to charge from a procurement perspective, accrual to charge. Will be and then once when you make an invoice by relieving the accrual, we are going to relieve the accrual by matching it. Right? We have two types of match. One is a PO match, and then one is a reserve match. In Fusion, it has been made automatic. In EBIS, we have to manually choose which type of a reserve, uh, which type of match you have to make. Now, whether if you if the, the PO is saying reserve match, and then if you make a PO match, it will fail actually in the in AP. Similarly, YZ verse also. Right? So it has to match when you are matching and then are getting the approvals where relieved. You have to put the appropriate match levels in the invoice. Otherwise, it will fail actually. Whereas in Fusion, it is not so. You do not have to specify at all. It will automatically pick up the match option of either PO, PO match or a result match actually, automatically. And then it will now match and then it will now relieve the accrual section. You know, anyway. And then the IPV will be hit if uh, uh, what happens if we are now, if the, uh, the invoice price is 11, and then if you're going to, what happens the PO price is 11, and then if the supplier is uh, raising an invoice at 13, it will be having. But in India, it is not allowed at all. Supplier cannot raise an invoice more than the PO price at all. So that is a very strict instruction in India. Whereas in Western countries, they allow you because of some, uh, uh, like let's say the war is there because of which what happens, I know, raising the price. So that's sort of a, what happens, the flexibility is there in Western countries. So they can even raise a higher one. So in which case, the difference will be hitting the IPV actually. So normally IPV will be getting hit when there is a, what happens, a currency fluctuations basically. If you're not dealing on a foreign currency, and there are very many reasons because of which IPV will be affected. And then afterwards, we are now recording the freight this much, the miscellaneous expenses, and then the, the, no, the taxes based upon your India localization or whatever it is. So the, the whole thing put together becomes AP liability. So after the first stage of accounting, you will have what? A receiving inspection to accrual. After the second stage of accounting, it will be charge account accrual. And after the third stage of accounting, after the third stage of accounting, it will be charge account to liability actually. So this is basically a notional liability. Fine. It indicates that how much you have to pay. That this is the actual liability. So after three stages of accounting, the accounting entries which are left as what? Charge account to liability. Then afterwards, we will now issue a check to the supplier. And so the liability gets relieved and then the cash clearing will be hit now. The cash clearing is it. So after the four stages of accounting, it will be charge account to cash clearing. And then after final stages of accounting, after uh, the cash management, uh, using the cash management, when you perform a bank reconciliation by posting the bank charges, it is the charge account to cash account of the final entry sector. So the inventory managers will be, uh, rather the procurement managers will be very much interested upon the charge account to cash account, how much they are spending. So they can optimize the spend only when they know the charge account. Find how much money is being spent. 
and charge account is a very important one as far as uh, the procurement managers are concerned right? the top managers in the procurement they will be monitoring it and they want very many things to be monitored actually they want very many things to be monitored so we are going to see the charge to cash as far as the ptl period life cycle well. and then if they can optimize the spend by monitoring this charge to cash fine right? that will be excellent actually that is the main purpose of procurement module Fine. What else? The, the, what is called your charge account to cash account. <coughs> so uh, this is the thing which uh, is the what about the general accounting. Process. So we are now going to concentrate on the charge account. Fine. How many ways we are going to hit the charge account? Fine. There are very many ways of hitting the charge account. We are going to discuss upon this. So that is what. So that is very very important from a procurement perspective. So let us go there and see whether this is now got completed or not. Fine. Retrieval depth changes. <coughs> it takes a longer time actually. Okay. You will now hope that what happens, it must have got completed or it must have done some uh, reasonable amount of changes. Now, let us now log out and log in, and then you'll now try to what happens, set up your listing. <clears throat> so, sign out and sign in. So, always have a habit of signing out and signing in so that what happens, it will be possible. So, sign in. Let us now configure our requisition approvals with this position now. So, go to click on it. I will now go to what setup again. <clears throat> so, go to the setup and maintenance, and then I'm going to configure this. So click on search and go there. Manage right, percentage APP percentage. Manage requisition of course. <clears throat> Manage requisition of the one. So here I'm going to see this. So here now choose it now. I'm going to I'm going to go to the edit rows. I'm going to edit rows. And then I'm going to make a change. So the center one I'm using it now as of now. Center one I'm using it. So here I got only one condition over here now. Fine, doesn't matter. Only one condition there. I click on edit. Uh, I got only one condition here. Now. And I click on edit. Now I go to the word there. Sixth one now. Fine. Sixth one is position approval. Fine, doesn't matter. Approval required. So we have seen the automatic and then approval required also. In the approval required, we have seen everything except position. Fine. What is the position? The approval group, job level, single approval, supervisor, everything we have seen now. Now we are discussing about the position hierarchy. So go that one. So position hierarchy is the one. Fine. I will not say preparer's position. Fine. Here we will not start with. I will not start the next position. And then the minimum job level, I will not say two levels. Fine. That means what? Your assistant manager mechanical, and then the what's called your manager mechanical. Leader. So the top position, the hierarchy I have mentioned. Now, fine. The position starts on T02 and not on EMP3 now. Okay. T02. And the top position, the hierarchy, and go that. So the top position, and drop it down, and then choose it. So go that T zero two, and then click on search. So sometimes it doesn't come off, and you go to the advanced, and then because you click on advanced, and starts with the T zero two. Sometimes the normal search doesn't give you, and even advanced search is also coming. No, is not blind. And click on search now. Now it's not showing you everything. Fine. I'll have to go home and see the T02. I will now say uh, contains. What are the contains? T02. I will make a search now. Oh, God. What happened? Top position error is not coming at all. Because of the error now, fine. Uh, we have now got this problem. Fine. It starts with does not contain, is not blank. I'm not getting this top position hierarchy at all. <clears throat> Fine, that has to come. Otherwise, what happens? You cannot do anything at all. Top position hierarchy. Uh, because none of the positions are basically coming up. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe LDAP is still running. Maybe, yeah, yeah. LDAP has to complete now. That's another thing. <clears throat> so if it doesn't come, then what happens? Your setups is not sync. Sometimes what happens, it even take after a day actually right? for you to sense actually. It, it takes even a day actually. Uh, LDAP is going to sync all the setups into the transaction systems. And then uh, sometimes it takes a longer time actually. But that is how we set up and use it in the rules, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So here we give the top position and then uh, run the requisition and submit it. That's all. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, okay. That's the only thing I do. Click on it. And then here I go there. Go to the search. And 
I go to what? Manage percentage. APP percentage monitoring. So manage requisition approvals. Manage requisition approvals. <coughs> so select it and click on edit tools. Maybe that LDAP might not have come properly down to the point. So we had a sense of error for the new one. And click on this. So click on it and go there. And then I will say, is that position level hierarchy? I will now say, uh, preparer's position actually. So we already given the position, next position. I will now say, from preparer's position onwards, I will now say two levels. Okay. And the T02, it has to come out and, and such for it, not giving any results for top position. Sometimes, so the system descends, it takes a longer time actually, so it's that fast. And then I will now say, is not blank. And then search for it, you know, see whether the T02 is coming up somewhere here or not. And all the US1 business unit is coming, and my business unit is not at all coming here. US1 business unit is able to be coming actually. Right. The business unit is only US1. So why mine is not coming? My BU's uh, position hierarchy is not coming. I can go there and then make a check of it up and keep on cancel. <coughs> <coughs> I will not do the what? Manage percentage, <coughs> position percentage, pre percentage. Oh God. Position pre percentage. I will go there, click on it. So this doesn't show me uh, to which structure it belongs to. Actually. We don't mention anything about your uh, what's called single time, expand it. And then go there, it's active actually. So if I click on edit, it will not go to draft actually. If I click on edit and then have a look at it. It will not go to draft, and then I had to again do it. So here it's saying updating the tree version will result in a status to draft. Actually, click OK to continue. It is not. Update tree nodes while keeping the tree version active. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I will not click on OK. It will not go to draft. Actually, we are not going to draft. Actually. No, no. Uh, when you created your business unit here, did you give any common uh, RDS? Uh, I have not given a common RDS. Actually, fine. I have not given uh, some other RDS. No, fine. Yeah, but this position is in common set. Common it's is okay. And even okay. with the audience, if I am in the common set, it will definitely work. Okay, okay. Fine. Since I am in the common set, right. whatever may be the audience, it doesn't matter. It has to work. Okay. And we don't have a, what happens, a choice to even give your set actually. It automatically creates everything on a common set. Explain it. Okay, okay. Explain it. And everything is coming in. So keep your cursor on the top position. What no description is coming. And what is this now? It's the export notes actually. So this is for duplicating. You go to actions and then what happens? You go there. I will now set it to active actually. So you only add. So click on submit and I will again submit it. The three version is now submitted and be updated actually. On this place, I will now know what happens. You go there, go to the actions, and then go to the status to active. Status to active. Will again, perform an audit on this one. On so, there are multiple options. Offline audit is also there. Now, schedule it is also there. So, let us not perform an online audit. Okay. So, this position tree is basically across uh, your uh, structures actually. Right. Just like in Avis, we can do it across success. Okay. It is known for all the common business, you know, all the business units is a common one. Okay. I have one more doubt on this now. I have one more doubt. So the error is just coming up in the part. That's what I'm saying. There's additional information about it, the error is not coming. So I have one more doubt. I will not try to address that. So click on search. <clears throat> it's called manage percentage. Legal percentage. HCM percentage. There's a task called manage legal entity has same information. You go there. And then I will now see uh, in the bottom and let me query to manage legal entity has same information. So click on search. Manage the legal entity has same information. And click on the underline of this one. I will click on the hyperlink of the legal entity. You now go to the same information and it is not a one. Uh, 
ஒரு <laughs> Uh, upon this uh, no again query for some kind of the manage percentage position percentage e percentage and then how will look at my position whether it is not active or not so expand it and see if it must be active so this is active so let us now log out and log in and then again try this that error remote error is coming and then uh, that causes a problem for me actually it is happening for the past 3 4 trainings actually and i could not understand uh, what exactly has to be done before beyond this that i am having this problem go there so let us now go there and um, you go to what so go to set up and maintenance <coughs> so go there click on it so click on search now search manage percentage percentage manage requisition of course so one and one point that is what by this time the ldap might have got completed so click on it so click on any tools <coughs> go there and then i will keep my cursor on the second one so click on edit go there edit it make it as what position hierarchy so prepare as position next position you now say two levels or only one level i will not there so go the t02 come on come on come on not coming at all so click on the top position i like to go to the advanced search and i must say it's not great i must get the trees of other business units also find use one business unit is okay and no say contains ah where the contain contains is there i have what mgr contains and then i want to search now the thing is there is still at all stops with t0 is also not correct there is something or sometimes what happens it takes a longer time for you to since this change actually clear we will not do this exercise tomorrow because it's not coming up so we will not do this exercise tomorrow because it may even take some time extra so we will now go into the our charge account actually and now we start to begin our charge account i told you that charge account is very important for us now so we are now going to begin our discussion on charge accounting now charge account so there is a document on the charge accounting so we have already seen this example now so we already seen this complete one so from charge to cash how it is now done and we are going to do the charge accounting now. charge accounting so go there so we have one document on this and you go to the what's called your addition ducts and records and double click on it so we have one i have now uploaded this document fine on the additional docs records file i have uploaded the 03 other expense items have been submitted to this one fine double click on it so we'll now have a discussion about this so 03 asset expense items and submitted to such so when you perform a transaction on the purchasing fine so once when you do it the charge account to cash account there are five ways of what happens uh, performing a transaction on this fine there what asset item into asset submitment then asset item into an expense submitment so then asset item into expense now expense into asset and then expense into expense and then expense into non tracked expense so these are the five ways of uh, transacting your requisition sector so we will now have a discussion on this first of all let us say i am now manufacturing the steel rods actually for in kerosene is an asset item i'm going to place a purchase order the purchasing department now place a what happens a, a, a 
purchase order on the kerosene, which is the Nazarene. And then what? we will now receive it in the furnace. So whip is a furnace, and then we'll be having a sub inventory very near whip that is called a shop flow sub inventory in which we'll receive it. And then afterwards, we'll now pump it into whip actually. So the furnace is basically a working process. And then furnace is always a, any whip uh, is basically an asset sub inventory only. So the asset which has been purchased will be transferred over here, and then there will not be any loss of the what happens asset value actually. The steel billets are also purchased by the purchasing department, and then the clause will be pumped into the furnace actually for rolling. So it will not go into the rolling mills. And then uh, once when you roll it into steel rods, we are going to tie the rods with a, what happens, a steel rope actually. So the steel rope is basically an expense item. So that will not contribute to the, what happens, the cost of your production actually. Because it is of a lesser value. And so what happens, it will be an expense item. And remember, in our company, we are going to make the steel ropes as an expense item because uh, we are not saying that steel rods cost is, let us say, uh, around say $1,000. This may be 0.5 dollars. Right? Every rope will be costing you 0.5 dollars. So since it is an insignificant cost, right, we will be configuring as expensive. Whereas the steel rope manufacturing company, it is an asset. Item. So item by nature will not be an asset or expense, but by usage, it will not become an asset or expense. Right? By usage only, it will not become an asset or expense. So here also, what happens? We are going to perform a transaction with the rolling mills. And then uh, once when the steel rods are rolled, we will know uh, what happens? Uh, tied to the appropriate rope, and then it becomes uh, ready for shipping actually. It's the finished goods. So steel rods is the finished goods. And then this is an asset item. And then this transaction is known as what? Asset into asset. Fine. Your kerosene is now pumped into furnace as well as your steel billets is now pumped into this place. This is called an expense into asset now. Right? Expense item into asset separate. This is the third one. So here, the expense items are pumped into an asset separate. This is the third type of transaction we are making. Right? Next is what? The asset item is now going to be spent to an, sent to an, a maintenance submitter. So 50 liters of kerosene, we have purchased it, and then uh, it is uh, basically called an expense receipt. Fine. So once when you give the asset item into an expense of inventory, we are going to receive it. So this is called asset into expense. So here we are going to use the kerosene for lubrication and then cleaning the furnace actually. You'll be using it in this furnace for using it for cleaning and lubrication other activities. And so this is the expense now. That means what? This much of a money, let us say it is a 10 rupees now, fine. It is a 500 rupees worth of uh, kerosene is uh, not going into the items cost at all. Items cost will not be hitting this, this uh, 50 liters of kerosene not be because you are expensing away. An asset item is getting expensed out. Fine. We call them as what? Expensing away. Fine. The sub inventory itself is an expense sub inventory. Similarly, this expense item will also not go to the contribute to the finished goods cost actually. Similarly, you'll be using so many expense items in the industry, like all of bowls, nuts, washers. Let us say I'm manufacturing a monitor. I'm not going to use the 20 screws. Fine. Every screw is going to cost only, let us say, the two or three cents or two or three paise. And then since it is an insignificant cost, it will not be reflecting on the finished goods cost. So an expense item basically will be what a low cost item. In this case, this is a significant cost, but since we are expensing out into an expense sub inventory, so this cost will not be considered into the finished goods cost. So every finished good in the manufacturing industry will be having a manufacturing bill. So the manufacturing bill will be having both asset and expense items. Like what happens is asset and expense item will be contribution as a component section. Asset and expense items will be contributing to the bill actually. And then when you roll up the cost, the asset items cost is rolled up, whereas the expense items are ignored actually. But expense items will also be having a cost. And we can even monitor it separately. And then apart from that, the finished good will be having resources which are pumped in into this field. You may be pumping in a welder, you may be putting in a weld cutter, <clears throat> and then other inspectors to perform this activity on the manufacturing. So the items cost plus the resource cost, once when rolled up, will be your total cost of production. Actually. So your finished good will be having both asset and expense items. Fine. It will be contributing to this, but expense item may not be coming to the cost, but it will be in the bill. In the bill of a manufacturing bill, it will be there. Actually. So these are the two examples. You now seen the asset into asset into asset. You have seen the asset into expense subunity also. The expense into asset subunity also. Right? Now, apart from that, what happens? Normally, an expense item will be a low cost item, but it is always not so. So, for example, when an employee is hired, we'll be having a new high kit, which what happens? We'll be having a laptop purchased and then a suitcase purchased, and then we're going to leave it now. Right? So we'll be configuring the laptop as well as suitcase as an expense item because this laptop is not going to contribute anything to my steel rods at all. Since the laptop is not going, not going to contribute anything to steel rods, it becomes an expense item. It is a very costly one, 500 US dollars, right? I mean, a laptop. 
is a expense item it is a expensive item but we are now going to consider it because we are not manufacturing laptops actually we are manufacturing steel rods and so for our company it is an expense item but the dell which is manufacturing the laptop it is an asset item for so we will be having these things and then what happens we will be having a new higher stocking fine and then this is also the expense supplementary and then we will be having a separate transaction another company we have a separate transaction date called what a new hire issue and then uh, whenever a new hire is now made so we even give listing cards and uh, so many other things to the one fine we issue the invoice so with a specific transaction type we will be issuing those things so this is called an expense item it is an expense supplementary it comes under fourth category and expense item and expense supplementary so we make this transaction similarly what happens uh, we buy the stationery is like paper pen pencil etc they are all expense items but uh, what happens we will be keeping it on a stationery stores and then whenever anybody wants it any employee will now walk into the stationery stores and he will now pick up the paper or pen or pencil sharpener eraser everything he will not go away he will not make any entry at all anywhere so your issues to employees are not required so this sub inventory will be a non tracked sub inventory <laughs> that means what it will never show you how much of paper is there only when you perform a count at the time what happens you know so no let us say we have kept 50 reams of paper so every wednesday we have a habit of what happens we have one inspector who will be walking into the station stores and then you know count all the expense items over here so upon counting he will know oh god paper has now gone to only two reams so it needs to be replenished fine he will now trigger a replenishment counting fine through which what happens it gets replenished fine it gets backfilled by a purchase order actually so this is called expense into a non tracked expense fine this is not tracked at all so we will never know the stock of the paper pen or pencil fine then in a non tracked supplementary so that contribute the fifth class fine expense item into a non tracked supplementary so normally when you create a requisition you will be creating it normally for inventory fine all these things are hitting the inventory fine everything will be hitting inventory so sometimes what happens you will be hitting an expense destination also the destination is normally an inventory fine the destination can also be expense for example i have now received a order from hospitals to what happens replenish the stock actually fine so we will be having a small storage activity in this place and then here the hand gloves the needles etc etc and then some medicines also what happens the orders there fine we have a what happens our order for this. and then whenever the stock level goes below we will now run there are three types of what happens a replenishment available here one is a kanban replenishment one is a replenishment counting and then one is a periodic automatic replenishment once again <coughs> so there are three types of replenishment techniques are available here one is a kanban replenishment one is the periodic automatic replenishment and one is a replenishment counting through which we will be replenishing the hospital area so the hospital's location will be created as a location and then the location will not be tied to any inventory or so if a location is not tied to an inventory or so that location can be associated to a self service procurement requester or to an expense destination actually so the purchase orders and purchase requisition will be having for this particular expense destination we want the item and then once we do it what happens it will be done according to the formula everything is there and then the purchase order will be placed for expense destination it will not be associated to any, any inventory or at all locations will not have a what happens association to any inventory or so we will now make a reset at this location and then it gets completed actually so this is called expense destination it will not have any association to any inventory or at all fine right? so there are two types of destination one is the inventory destination one is the expense destination expense destination or places where is outside our company where we are replenishing certain customers actually so this way it works fine right? so these are the five types of transactions which you made on the purchase order fine right? so the charge account is a very important one and right? how it is going to hit on this the fourth and fifth are exactly same now fine right? except that what happens it is a non tracked supplementary here right. here it is a what's called is a expense supplementary here is a non tracked supplementary but from accounting perspective both are same actually so whether you transfer a expense to expense or expense to a non tracked expense so from accounting perspective both are same so it is basically from accounting per asset and asset supplementary asset and expense supplementary uh, expense to asset and expense it is the expense supplementary or the very important one and remember people will be tracking on different different charge accounts actually so the people are going to track it on different different charge accounts so we are going to begin this activity now we are going to begin this activity so let us now begin this activity no no one question 
Yeah, so the, the first item, Reddit kerosene, we yeah. are saying it is asset item as well as uh, expense item because we are. No, it is not expense. Into... No, no, one second. It is asset item only. When you sell it to a maintenance subinventory, maintenance is an expense subinventory. So this is coming under a number category two. Two, okay. Asset item is not transacted into an expense subinventory. It is not an expense item at all. Kerosene is an asset item. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's where I was confused. Okay. My item is asset item, but okay. we are transacting it in expense of inventory. Expense of inventory, okay. Sure. So these are the four various transactions which will now take place, and that many customers would like the charge account to be hit for all these terms in the different different accounting actually. Fine. Different different accounts they would like. To have. So in many companies, it will be they will be asking the boss. They will be able to monitor only for number three how much of money is being spent. Only for number one, how much is how much of money is spent, so that they can optimize the spend actually. And also for expense and inventory destinations also. So we are going to begin our discussion on the first four: right? asset into asset, and then asset into expense, and then expense into asset, and then expense into expense. Right? So we will now begin our discussion about how to set the charge account for these four types of transactions. Any other doubts on this? No, fine. The basic understanding. I know simulated, this is a simulated one, fine. Uh, just only for understanding purposes. So uh, are you able to understand the simulation? Santosh is clear, now. Huh? The entire process. Is clear. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. So we are now going to see the four ones now, right? four types of what happens in your uh, transactions basically. So I'll now go that on it. I'm going to this place. And then I'll now open up the fusion procurement documentation. <clears throat> and then here, we will now have one purchasing accounting will be there. Right? Uh, uh, does it accounting is there? Uh, I'm in the fusion procurement now. Right? So Fusion purchasing only. So open up the fusion purchasing accounting on the fusion procurement documentation. And fusion purchasing is only one. And double click on it. And then let me open it up. Nana, one more, one more doubt, Nana. Yeah. So, so we are saying like the asset item is transacted into expense sub inventory, right? Yeah. When it is received. Uh, so, but you are saying uh, that it is not uh, uh, contributing to the actual cost of the finished yeah. good. Exactly. Right, I mean, we are buying it anyway, right? Not at all. Yeah. No, we are we are buying it anyway, right? That kerosene. Oh, how does it doesn't contribute? Yeah, we are buying it. We are paying money and then buying it. Even expense items also, we are paying the supplier and then we are buying it. Right. But company says that finished good, should, this expense should not be contributed to this finished good at all. For example, I'm man manufacturing a monitor. I'm cleaning it with a cotton waste structure. Right. Oh, okay. okay. The okay. cost of monitor is the, the manufacturing cost is around say thousand five hundred, and then I'm spending one rupee or one dollar, thousand five hundred to one dollar for cleaning the monitor. They say this cotton waste cost should not contribute to the monitor's cost actually. Okay, okay. But if they say it has to contribute, then you have to make this as asset as asset submitted. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. You have to change it to asset submitted. Yeah, yeah. It all depends upon how the end client wants it. Actually. Wants it. Okay. Got it. Got it. It is again uh, in the discretion of the incline. He says that yeah. this cost also has to come into your manufacturing, then make it as asset. Fine, make this submit. Yeah, yeah, got it. So we are now going to create one uh, one asset item and then one expense item and then one asset sub inventory and then one expense sub inventory for our exercise. So these configurations are mutually discussed and then decided. Fine. Everything is now mutually discussed. Which one has to be an asset, which one has to be an expense. You have to discuss the end client and then accordingly design. Right. Everything will be discussed and decided. And then uh, uh, sometimes what happens, they will now say that this cost has to go into the finished goods, means what you have to make it as an asset. And then put this laptop also in the bill of a finished good, actually. Generally, what happens, it will be getting rolled up, actually. So as and when there's no purchase in the receipt, that will be rolled up to the cost of the uh, finished goods, actually. So it all depends upon how we are discussing the end client and accordingly, you will not decide. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> this is all called overheads of your production, actually. The laptop and suitcase which are giving you the employees or overheads. So overheads will not contribute to your whatever the cost of production. <clears throat> like I am now calling Jayalalitha to perform a dance for selling my soap actually. So the soap cost will not show the cost of Jayalalitha's dance actually. That is a, is a, is a marketing overhead actually. So likewise, what happens? All these expenses, expenses, expenses on expense items are marketing overheads. 
In EBIS, we cannot cost the expense items at all. That is infusion. We can very well cost the expense items. Expense items also can be costed in EBIS, the infusion item. That is not possible in EBIS. Here, the expense items also can be costed. Any other doubts from anybody else? We are now going to configure it. Good then. So everybody is now clear on this. Now, find that point. So here, I'm now going to create these accounts. <clears throat> right? And then these submitments. And then start a transaction. Uh, and now I will not have a coffee break. My wife is not there. I will not go to the kitchen and then I will not make a coffee and then come back. So there is a small five minutes break. Just wait for something on. I will have a small, I'm not going to stop the record and then I will again start it. Okay, now I'm back now. So now I'm going to create these accounts actually in the system. I will go there and then let me create the accounts in the system. So click on it. No, go there. So, sorry. I've not moved. Yeah. Uh, this is one. Click on search now. We have a search. It is a manage find. Not a phone specific value. I go to the manage chart of accounts value set structure. <clears throat> and then I have no query my values over here. So T0 is the one. I will now go to the natural account and we are in the process of what happens there, simulating the charge accounts. You go to the accounting, the accounting. so click on the manage values and then I'm going to add the values. So if you give a search, we already created four accounts over here. You can also see the four accounts up here. Now we'll now create the balance accounts. So we click on plus. So the first account is 1004 as an expense actually. <clears throat> so 1004 will be an expense actually. So click on plus now. We'll be getting 1004 as an expense account. In fact, what happens is uh, this chart of accounts will be uploaded by the what's called the financial team. Actually. This also they will not only do it, but since they are not there, I'm not waiting. Make it as an expense. Expense account. So 1004. 5, 6, 7, 8 are also expense now. Right? Just, yes, what you can see. 5, 6, 7, 8 are also expense. So click on plus now. We'll now make the 5, 6, 7, 8 also. <coughs> so click on plus. And we'll make five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> so five, six, seven, eight are also going to be expense item. <clears throat> so we'll be having uh, this many expense accounts. Okay? Four, five, six, seven, eight are expense. So go there. One thousand five. One thousand five, and then make it as an expense. And then drop it on, and then make it as an expense. If you're making a mistake, please correct it then and there now. Four, five. Six, right? 1006, 1006, and then make it as an expense. Click on plus one. Right? 1007, 1007, and then make it as an expense. Click on plus one. 1008, make it as an expense. So 5678. Then 9, 10, and 11 are asset. Fine. 9, 10, and 11 are asset. So click on first. Now make 9 and 10 and 11. So 1009. There's going to be an asset. <coughs> so click on plus. 1010. So this is going to be an asset. And then click on plus. 1011 is also an asset. 1011. Is also an asset. And then we will have one liability account now, fine. That is called expense liability, fine, fine. Expense accrual. So we have an asset accrual there, uh, that this is going to be an asset accrual, fine. 1001 is going to be an asset accrual, and then this will be using it for expense accruals, actually. 1012. Click on plus now, fine. We're going to use it for expense accrual. We'll be doing it later, actually, not now. 1012. Make it as a liability account. So there are two types of accruals. One is an asset accrual, and then one is an expense accrual. So we are also similar everything fine. Give us save and close. So it is not done. <clears throat> so we'll now again come back and then have a look at it whether everything is there in place or not. So go there. I will now go to the manage values and then make a search. So click on search. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <clears throat> 10, 11, 12, all of that in place. Three assets, and then the remaining expenses. Okay. So it is not done. Now let us now go and then create our submitments for the next phase. We need one asset submittery and then one expense submittery. Put the manage fine. Uh, sub percentage 
look up percentage of maintain you know the others minus of the locators and that this organization t02 is the one and t02 is the one let us now create one asset sub inventory and then one expense sub inventory so we have one this now click on plus now <coughs> i will now simply name it as what uh, t if i t for asset underscore si and t asset sub inventory Asset sub inventory because it's got some character limitation. I'm using it. I'm click on it. I will not paste it over here. I will not paste it on my screen also. I just want to go there. You whatever you are creating it, whatever the, it has to be exactly same now. Fine. There is a problem. So if you don't do it like that, what happens? It will not work at all properly. So this is an asset sub inventory. Fine. What that point? Location is what T zero two. And then give it a tab now. And that's it. Fine. Give us seven dollars. The asset is enabled. Main floor is an asset sub inventory. Fine. Click on seven dollars. Let me create an expense sub inventory. <coughs> So T underscore assets on the subject is ready. So similarly, what happens? You go there, click on it. You will now create a new one called expense subject material. I will now say T underscore exp underscore SI. So I will now take a copy of it and then I will now update my worksheet actually. In the worksheet also, I am now updating it. I need an expense subject. Put down the description of my that. Location is a T02. The location of one is a tight location is becoming automatically over here now. I remove the asset, it becomes an expense. If you remove the asset subject, it becomes an excellent save and close. So we are now simulating this now. Fine, that point. So this simulation is now complete. We will now create two items now. Fine. One is an asset item. One is an expense item. Fine. Let us now create two items. So it's okay. I click on the now. I will now create two items: asset and expense item. Well, so I will now right click on the duplicate. Fine. Let me create two items now. Asset and expense item. So I go to the product management. I go to the product management. I go to the product information management, and I am going to create one asset and then one expense item for this exercise. Product information. <coughs> I will now create one asset and one expense. I click on it. I now go to the create item. So click on create item. I am now going to create one asset and one one expense. So I know my master org is T zero two zero. T zero two zero. So the one fine click on okay now fine. So a warning, we can ignore it because somebody is working on the EF of external instructions in the item actually on the product hub actually. So ignore this warning and then go ahead and then create a item. Actually. So go there. It is a T zero two underscore asset underscore item. <clears throat> And that's it. Fine. Go that's it. I will now go to associations and let me associate. By default, what happens? All the items are asset items actually. No need to change anything at all. Fine. Go to actions and then go to certain act. <coughs> Here, I will now say T02. Or then go to associated. Child or. You click on apply and that's fine. So the asset item is now created and then assigned to the child or. Also. So give us even close. Now let me create an expense item for this. So T02 expense item I'm going to create. So here the inventory asset value will be removed. So once when you remove the inventory asset value, it becomes an expense item. You click on create. You are going to remove the inventory asset value. Right. So the T02. Choose this now. And then click on OK. So accept this. And then put your item name now. Fine. T02 underscore. Expense underscore item. I will now call it as expense item. And do that. Go to the specifications now. Fine. We will now remove the inventory asset value. It is same like it is also. So in the manufacturing area, if you make the inventory asset value as no, it becomes an expense item. Fine. Make the inventory asset value as no, it becomes an expense item. So the inventory asset value is no. So if it is yes, it is an asset item. If it is no, it is an expense item. Now go to the associations. That is the only difference between asset and expense. So let me make it. So T zero two. I'm entering now. We go to the child or we click on a play. We click on that. <coughs> That's it. I'm going to point. Let us now simulate the what happened the charge account for this transaction. So we are going to simulate now. Fine. So we will now simulate the first three now. Where asset item into asset subsidiary. If this is the case. The end client wants the one thousand nine must be hit actually. <clears throat> Fine. 
and then if asset item in the expense sub inventory he wants 1004 and then if these two sub inventory values are not provided he wants the org level at 1010 right how he wants it and remember charge account becomes a very important uh, what happens a, a, a factor for the procurement managers actually and they want to see how uh, what happens uh, these accounts are charged so go there i will know what happens you go there click on it i will now go to what the manage mapping set of cost management actually so let's set up a maintenance <coughs> let me go to the manage mapping set of cost management so drop down and then bring it to the manufacturing and supply chain management and then i go there in this one i go to the manage mapping set and manage percentage map percentage set percentage and then go inside now manage mapping set of cost management cost accounting so we'll be having a look at the result accounting also later on so go to the cost accounting <coughs> So in the cost accounting, when I go to the management section here, I will now say material charge account. So I expand it, material charge. Account. So material charge account has got multiple things. One of the sub inventory. So I will now choose the material account sub inventory. If I click on the material account sub inventory, if I click on the hyperlink of the material account sub inventory, here I am going to add my chart of accounts. So go there, click on it. I will now add it. Plus one material account sub inventory. Go there, drop it down. I will now choose my P zero two. Is the one. So let me choose my chart of accounts. Actually, fine. This is the instance of a chart of accounts. Remember, I go there, select it, and then edit it. Fine. Go there, go on. And then here, I am now going to give a plus. Give a plus. So I am now going to specify the sub inventory name. Now, fine. This you have to pick it up from this word file. Actually, fine. Go there. So I will now say exactly pick it up. There is no list of values there. That is a mistake which Oracle has made. Now, fine. Exactly take a copy of it and then put it elsewhere. Even if you make one extra character, it will not work at all. Secondary inventory org. My inventory organization is what P zero two one. These two do not have anything. So the output chart of accounts. So order is what one thousand one. It has to hit now. So once when you now material account charge. Fine. So this is the asset sub inventory. If it is asset sub inventory, one thousand nine must be the charge account actually. So output is what ten nine one hundred nine one thousand nine is the charge. One thousand nine is the charge. Let me give a save and then see whether it is now getting saved or not. So, ten iPhone, one hundred iPhone, one thousand nine. So, asset into an asset sub inventory. Item is an asset item, and then if you transact it, what happens? It will be run. And give a save now. Find click on save. We will now see whether it is getting saved or not. Material account sub inventory. <coughs> so, whenever you perform an asset item into an asset sub inventory or to this particular asset sub inventory, this account will be. We will now click on plus. So when you perform an asset item into an expense sub inventory, then go that for it. So the uh, sub inventory is again here. Go there, and then we will not take a copy of the expense sub inventory. Take copy exactly. Take a copy. Do not put any extra characters. It will not work at all. Here again, what happens? The T zero two one. So if this is the case, one thousand four has to be hit now. If an asset item is transacted in the expense sub inventory, they want one thousand four to be hit. Now. So ten iPhone, ten iPhone, one thousand four, and that's it. I know that. So click on save. And then save and close, and then come back, and then again make a verification. Now, right? click on save and close, and then come back, and then again we'll now verify it. Now, and we'll click on submit. Now, we'll now see whether we have configured both the things very correctly or not. So, right? We have configured correctly. Right? For asset submit entry one thousand nine, and then expense submit entry. Sometimes what happens? You may have multiple such submit entries. Right? So you may not transact it to the particular asset or expense submit entry. In which case they say at the org level you pick up and then populate this up. If my transaction is not into these two sub inventories, then populate one zero one zero. That is what the end client is saying. So this is called org level. Fine, org level sub inventory. Now go there. So go there. Cancel now. Fine. We are now going to give org level uh, account. So it is a middle account organization, not the sub level. And middle account organization, I am going to set up. Put the middle account organization. Go there. So click on plus, and then let me add my chart of accounts over here. I think it is already there. Actually, I don't need it. I will now give a cancel. Fine. Middle account organization is already there. I will now. I will now modify that. I will now go there. Middle account organization we already set it now. Fine. While you are doing it, then it. So go to the query mode. Go to the query mode. And then query for this now. Fine. The query mode. Fine. T zero two is the one. Fine. So we already have it. I will now modify it. So we already have it. Then go there. Fine. So I am going to modify it actually. <clears throat> oh, it is not there at all. How come it is not there? It has to be there actually. I will not say one zero one zero is the one. I know that is the org level. So click on plus now. Click on plus. It has to be there actually. I will not say organization what T zero two one. Is the ten iPhone hundred iPhone? Uh, what is the account? One zero one zero. One zero one zero. Fine. 
Now, ox specific entry is there. I think we have made a default one with a star actually. Yeah, default no. was star, no, no. star. So this will now override the star actually. Right? It will not consider the star at all. So one zero one zero will be coming. So the default will not fire at all. Only when there is nothing, then it will fire. Now. And give a save and close. We'll again come back and then have a look at it. Save and close. Default was star actually. Default was star. So star is a least priority. And then if you have an arc specific entry, that only will be cornered actually while you're doing a request. So click on save and close. So we are now given an arc specific entry also. We have a star entry also. Star is 1000 actually. And then was, uh, this T021 has got 1010 actually. So the star entry is for 1000, 1000 actually as an asset account. So here the default is what this one. <coughs> 1010. It takes a longer time to what happens to save actually because it didn't even came there at all. Fine. There is some problem here now. It's still saving actually. Fine. We'll go there. We will now query again now on the other, other screen. We will now query now. Now see whether it has got saved or not. So I will not go there to I will now go to the manufacturing and supply chain management. Sometimes this is Nakara Karta. Map percentage, set percentage, and entry number. So, man, I sort of cost of printing. Uh, we go there, go to the space, I will now query for the metal account. Expand it. I will now say metal account. Metal account organization, I'm going to check the organization. If you want to check for it, I will now see ours now. Plenty are there now. I don't know how to query. Since there are plenty, I don't know. Use this one and then query. Use the two and then enter now. If you select correct, nothing is shown here at all. So here, what I'm saying, it has got saved. I think I'm going to do it. Save and close the one I'm giving it now. This place. I now go there and then query here itself. T zero to the one I'm going to query. Now see where it is going. Yeah, it is visible now. When I query it, it's visible. Now let us not test it. Let us not test it. I'm not, I'm not saving it again. Let us not test it. So we'll now go on and test it. Give a cancel now. Thank you all of it. Uh, I will now go to the find go to the query mode, find the report. We have this. Click on do you, the changes are not saved. If you leave this page, okay. I'm not leaving this page actually. We go there. I will now go to the procurement. I go to the purchase requisition. <clears throat> I'm going to put the purchase requisition. So go to the more task and then enter requisition lines. First of all, the requisition preferences has to be set properly. And we have already set up for our inventory. There are two types of destination which are discussed. One is an inventory destination, one is an expense destination. This is for external to our company actually. Yes. And then we will be receiving it on the sub inventory. This is a default sub inventory. You have cancel it. So, sub inventory is RMS1 actually. Sub inventory is RMS1 is the default sub inventory. We will now go and then create our requisition basically. I am not modifying any of the preferences actually. I am not leaving it as such. And then let me create a purchase requisition for it. I am going to the enter requisition lines. So, what I am going to do is I will now create an asset data. So, T02 asset data is the one which I am going to use it. So you can now see the charge account coming up properly. And again, okay, one more thing which I don't know if I have to log out and log in. This is not a correct thing. So when you make some major changes, what happens? You have a habit of logging out and logging in. Otherwise, the changes will not be reflecting properly at all. And sign out. And then sign in. Click on confirm. And then click on sign in. And then we are going to sign in. This I will know. Sign in. So sign out and sign in for the changes to take effect. I go to the procurement. I go to the purchase requisitions. And then go to the more task and then enter requisition lines in the one which I'm going to do for it. So now we are creating a requisition. So it's a T02 underscore ASS. The asset data will be coming. I choose the asset data. So once when you choose an other data, we will now see the charge account, what is happening. So 
we have the delivered location and then we are going to deliver it to rms actually rms one is the preferences in the preferences we have rms one as a supplementary so go there so once when you put the item what happens it has the category name has to come over no item has to be populated the category item has to come the category name has to come that means what it it means what it has populated on this <clears throat> so now wait for the category name to come up <clears throat> Source type has to be supplier actually. And once when you put it, it will not change it to inventory because the item is now enabled to go to my component. It will not change it to supplier. Change it to supplier. <clears throat> go that one. So everything is coming. You can now see the account of 1010 is coming mainly because what happens if it is going to be on an asset sub inventory, it has to be 1009. If it is going to be on this expense sub inventory, it has to be 1004. If it is on any other sub inventory, it is 1010 actually. Now RMS1 is a sub inventory because of it is not. So we will not change it to asset supplementary. So here it is not possible. Here, if we go there, so we will not change it here. Itself. So RMS one is not one. So let us not change it to asset supplementary. It has to become one thousand four. One thousand ten is the account which is now coming up. It's going to be. So let us now put the asset supplementary. So if you go on and change it, it doesn't happen because only when you add to cart, it will not change actually. Right? When you add to add to cart, it will not change. So click on add to cart. Right? Add to cart, and then let us know from the cart we will not see this. Let me remove the other item in the cart. And then have a look at it. Add to cart. So there will be two items in the cart. So let us now remove the other item in the cart and then have a look at it. So now the asset sub inventory has got changed actually. So the instance has become slow. Now find that the problem with these instances actually. <laughs> we can't help it. So it's added to cart. I click on the hyperlink. So one is an asset item. Let me remove the other item. Desktop, let me remove it. And that will now go to the review of it. So only when you add to the cart, it will now exactly reflect your actual accounts. So desktop has been removed. So let me review it and then have a look at it. So it is now getting reviewed now. <clears throat> so click on review. Right. Once when you go to the review, you can now see that. In this place, we can now see that changes happening. Right. On the main area, it will not look. So it is over there. So this is the asset item, and you can see that what happens. It is now still uh, 1,000. Asset item is what? It is 1,009. If I change it to expense sub inventory, it will now become 1,004, you can see. If I change there and drop it down. So asset item is 1,009. I go there, click on it. I will now change it to expense sub inventory. So you have to save it now. Fine. Only you save it, it will not go on. So click on save. On saving, what happened? The account will now become as 1004. So it doesn't become 1000. So if you leave it blank or if you choose anything other than these two now, fine, other than these two, even if you choose RMS2, fine, go there. It will be at the org level account will be coming. Otherwise, he will be giving an account for each and every submit material. Fine, org level account is this. So this is the org level account. Asset level. If uh, if he has given, then what else you'll be giving for each and every sub inventory? What is the account has to be given? You have to specify that. Since I have not specified for the RMS one or RMS two, it is now hitting the org level. One thousand. Now let us go there and then configure the remaining three for the expense actually. For the expense, we are going to configure. It. So I will now right click on the duplicate. So this exercise the asset into asset and asset and expense is not complete. Now the expense into asset and then expense into expense we are going to see. So click on it. You go to the setup and maintenance. So go there. I will now bring it what manufacturing and supply chain management. And again, manage mapping set now. Right? Manage percentage. Map percentage. Set percentage. <clears throat> manage mapping set of cost of money. So open up this manage mapping set. And then here, <clears throat> I will now go to the what the expense account. So expense account sub inventory, I'm going to configure it. I'm going to the expense account. Previously, material account, organization, material account, sub inventory account. Now, expense account sub inventory. I'm going to the expense account sub inventory. I'm going to Thank you. So I will now add a one. It's already there. Now. So click on plus and then add it. And now it's only for the query actually. And drop it down. I will now choose mine now. T02. Must. Okay. 
click on it. So we will now put this box. I click on plus. So I am now going to populate my secondary supplementary file. Expense it as a won't take a copy of it exactly. It doesn't have any list of values, and so we have to write it exactly. Otherwise, it will not work at all. The T021. Here also, we don't have any list of values. So, what they say is expense item at asset submitted is 1004, no, fine. 1004, 1005, 1006, actually. So, this way, you know, writing some accounts, you can even choose your own account. So, click on plus now. Fine. Not, uh, one more line. I don't go there. Click on it. I will not take up the expense sub inventory name. Paste it over here. Fine. Click on it. The T021. It is, how much it is in 1005 now? Fine. For this case, it is 1005 now. So it is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1005. And that's it. Go to it. it will now give a save and a close. So expense account at the sub level and then expense account at the organization level. Expense account at the organization level. So that is going to be at 1006 sector. If we are not transacting on any of these two sub inventories, it has to hit 1006 sector. I will now give a plus. Uh, what's called uh, at the org level, expense account at the org level. I click on plus now, let me add the, my chart of account. I will drop it down. Go there, check on it. The chart of account here. Select it. And then go down and then click on plus. So for the org, the org I'm putting 20, 0 to 1 is the one. So it is 1006 is the one. It is the 1006. So it is a 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1006. Go there. So click on save and close. It is now completed. Let us again go there and then shop. So it is preferable to log out and log in, but I am now trying it. If it doesn't come, then I will not log out and log in. So I will now go to the shop and click on shop. I will now go there. So click on it. Enter it. So I will now populate my expense. So it is C02 underscore EX expense item. I'm going to log it. Expense item is the one. So it is a, the, the, the sub inventory is RMS1 now. And so naturally 1006 will be coming. So 1006. Because when you transact on asset sub inventory, it is going to be 1004. If you transact on this specific expense sub inventory, it is 1005. If you are not transacting on any of these two sub inventories, or if it is going to be blank also, it is 1006. So 1006 is coming. Okay. I will not change it to what supplier. And then let me add to cart. There is an expense item. Click on add to cart. So the expense item is now getting added. So we'll now remove the asset and then make a check. Of it. So let me remove the asset now. And then review it. I click on review now. So we are going to test it. So go that to So 1006. So if you go and then populate this as asset, asset supplementary, asset supplementary, it will be 1004. And then give a save, it will be 1004. If you change it to expense supplementary, what happens? Don't worry, there will be so much of a requirement that will be coming up. So you have to do it accordingly. You have to save. Set up every charge account. Charge account becomes a very important account. And then if you make it as a blank also, blank also is what uh, is like what I was, you don't know in which supplementary you want to deliver. Org level, kind of org level. Yes, org level, exactly. Uh, is a blank is a org level. So these are the six combinations are there. Asset into asset supplementary, asset into expense supplementary, or asset into org. If the sub inventories are not given, this is a stream. Similarly, on the expense into asset, and then expense into expense supplementary, and then expense into org level. Now, let us say I am the requester, and I am now creating a requisition for cable digging, fine, cable laying for approximately a length of two kilometers. So they have to dig the uh, for ground, and then uh, make a one meter, uh, uh, what happens, uh, yeah, this thing now, and then lay the cable and then backfill it. So it is a two kilometer cable laying. So this is basically a service expenses. So when an employee is now creating such a service requisition, then what happens? It has to hit 1007. Every employee will be having an expense account. So it has to hit that account. So we are not going to configure this. Each and every employee will be having an expense account. So that they will now monitor the expenses and then which employee has created the demand actually. So the demand monitoring by an employee's expense account is the one which will be coming up. Now I'm not going to put that as 1,007. So let me go and then configure this. So I'm not going to configure it. Click on the home icon. We'll now configure the expense account of every employee. So whenever they make any service requisitions, that will be hit actually. They go to the procurement. 
go to the my client groups and then here what happens you go to so you every employee my students are saying sir we are not having the my client group icons at all if you don't have the my client account it means what you are not having the uh, what's called your human resource specialist role actually so talk to your manager then it must have given to some achara as employee they have to go and then send it up you have to only give a mail to them fine you will everybody because saas compliance says that everybody should not be given every role actually so some organizations are very strict upon this otherwise what happens you will be removed that saas uh, license itself the company itself will be if they make an audit if an external auditor comes and have a look at your roles given to the employees and then if they see that excess roles are given they may even remove your license actually so it's very strict upon some company even the implementers will not be having the it security manager at all you know so that way it works upon so you may have to write to someone then you have to comply fine those none other go fine security becomes a paramount importance in saas uh, cloud actually so go that one so go to the person management and then let me query my first employee <coughs> you know so is what emp1 is fine t02 underscore last name comma space first name fine click on search now it will be coming so i am now going to provide the expense account of this so click on it and then let me edit it <coughs> so i'm going to edit when click on edit and then go to what update normally perform an update because update will now create a version of a record so that you will understand about which employee has not performed an update actually correction will not create any version of a record and you will update the one it is true in evs as well as in fusion right? go to edit and then update you are going to perform an update so action is what assignment change and not add assignments remember you have to go for assignment change it so click on okay and then i will now populate this 1007 expense account for this employee expense plus account i will so employees expense account i will populate to go down go down go down here what are the vulnerabilities that what we will be having an expense account that expense information default expense account i am going to put it so every employee every requester will be given this default expense if you are a requester point requester is nothing but a demand creator actually so the person is now creating a demand so he will be so this account will be hit and then he will be responsible for all the requisitions he is making it over a month time or over a quarter period they will now monitor this particular expense account and then they may even question you about why you have created so much of a demand you have to justify it if an audit objection comes in or audit inquiry comes in but the requester has to submit I click on review now you go to review because the purpose of purchasing module is to optimize the spend analyze the spend and then optimize it or reduce it fine either you optimize it either you try to reduce fine reduce expenses if that is not possible try to at least optimize it fine that is the purpose of a procurement module now fine so these accounts has to be set very properly based upon for their analysis actually expense analysis how you spending it spend analysis rather the spend analysis so many accounts has to be created we have created so many accounts for a what happens a musket company actually because they wanted to monitor it to a great extent it is a building construction company and so what happens a, they wanted to keep each and every expenses tracked fine like how much of cement they are buying how much of jelly how much of sand how much of bricks each and everything they analyze for a period and then they optimize the spend also <coughs> so we are going to review it and then finally submit it so first to save and then review and then submit fine so first you have to save it and then finally review it and then submit so once when this employee is now going to what happens uh, create here yeah, one for a particular category and not an item fine category is basically service based it will now be creating a service based requisition so once when you make it the 1007 of his expense account will be coming as a charge account actually <coughs> so go there so you know go on and review it now fine what review what point it now says only one change actually and this is the one big change 1007 is the only change expense information has not gone and that there is no other change at all you know many many change and click on submit by which what happens it gets submitted so click on yes now the request will be submitted now let us now go there and then shop again for this <coughs> so ignore that go on it purchase account charge account so i will now go to the shop again if i now delete this item Because this item is already there, I'll let me delete it, and then I will now again go for shopping. I click on shop. The item is deleted, and there will not be anything in the cart now. I will now go to the enter requisition lines, and then this time, what happens? I will not put an item, but the other one, the category. So here, the line type is not goods. It's basically what 
It's a service, service structure is basically. Right? It's a fixed price service. So he is now servicing, he is now uh, asking for a, what happens a service actually. So we will not choose what, so normally what happens, we will not use this uh, fixed price service structure. So once you put it, item will not be coming description. I will not say uh, cable lay. So this is what he is asking for. I will now choose one category only. Right? I will now put some category. You will now put the appropriate category. Only. So you will now put an amount over here. And then if you go and then see, 1007 will be the charge account for this requisition action. You will see 1007. And then this can be overridden. Whereas in this case, we cannot override it all. When you transact on any of the six, we cannot override the charge account at all. Charge account cannot be overridden. It is as per the, uh, what happens, a plan only. But if it is going to be a service purchase, whatever has defaulted, we can very well override because what happens, let us say, the GM is now creating it. When GM has got an expense account. So you may not, uh, what happens, uh, would like to charge the GM, right? would like to charge one of his subordinates. Maybe. So it allows you to override only for service purchases or some expense purchases. Maybe. So whereas when you perform a transaction on any of the six, <coughs> you cannot override the charge account at all. That becomes a great out. And sometimes what happens, uh, this account becomes a, what happens, a meaningless one. Fine, because many employees are creating it. So we will know how, what happens when employees creating it, it will now hit a common expense account also. It's fine. Expense account will be common and not as per this actually. So I'm going to set up 1,002. I, I will not give a cancel now. Uh, I will not give a done and then come out of it. I will not go. And then I will not go to the preferences. Fine. So many companies use this now. I click on the update requisition preferences. So I'm now updating the employee's preferences actually. EMP1 has logged in. So here, what happens if you go there, I will now add an account. No, fine. Click on plus. No, fine. Let me add a favorite charge account. <clears throat> Go there. I will now say uh, MIC department. Expense account. MIC department's expense account. Go there. Go there. So 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002. So this will now override the employee's charge account. The employee has got a charge account of 1001. So whichever employee is not done for each and every one, if you are given a charge, a favorite charge account, this will now override the employee's charge account. Go on and give it no fine. This overrides the employee's charge account. You go on and have a look at it again now. Update position preferences. It's not showing you this no fine. So this is now going to override the employee's charge account. Go to the place. Go to the enter requisition lines. Then go there. I will now make it as what? Fixed prices services. Jimmy check on. I want to go there. I will now say some category and we'll put it now. Okay, okay. It's no supplier now. Category name. I will not choose this one. I will not put. So now 1002 will not default and not 1007 actually. So if you have a common account specified on the bottom, if you have a common account on this one, right? So user preferred account, if you put it, that will now supersede the employee's expense account. And again, remember, both the things are editable actually. And if the uh, requester wants, I don't want this account to be hit, some other account to be hit. So for accounting purposes, for or tracking, expense tracking purposes, he has got the flexibility to change also. The charge account. This facility of modifying the charge account is not possible in the first six sector. Got it now, fine. Now we have to go even further also, fine. We have to go, and then go further actually, fine. So we are now completed a basic level of this thing now, fine. Brother. So we have to go further also on the accounting. Fine. Any doubts on this now? So this is how the asset into asset and the asset in the expense will not take place. We are now analyzed all the four candidates. Fine. Fifth one is also fourth one. Fine. Asset into asset subordinate. So many companies will be having the charge account to be sit properly for one, two, three, four scenarios. We have to set up appropriate accounts. Fine. Then only what happens? You'll be able to what happens? Monitor the expenses we are making it. So we will now go there, find this activity is completed. We'll again go to the position hierarchy and then make a look. Now, fine. No, log out and see that the position is now coming up. Now. I can sign out and sign in. Now. The position was giving a problem for me. Right. And I have a feeling that I'm now missing some steps on this now. Right? I have a feeling. Otherwise, uh, tomorrow we'll again try on this now. What is space? What is the setup and maintenance? 
<coughs> click on search. So it's a manage position. Reposition of rules. Reposition of rules. Choose this one and click on edit rule. We'll see whether our position error like comes now or not. So click on it. Or we'll click on edit now. <clears throat> I will now make it the position hierarchy. Prepare us position. I must say prepare us position. I know the two levels now. You put T0 to it as well. Come on, come on, Murga, Murga, come on, come on, come on. Oh my God. He's saying no results. Top position hierarchy is still not visible actually. So click on advanced. And then I click on search. No, it's not blank. It shows you only the visions. One only. Here's one designated resolution. Is nothing is coming to you. So this particular top positions are coming up. Oh, so we will not test it tomorrow, actually. Fine. This one will not test it tomorrow. The next topic is what category level, category based charge account. Sometimes what happens if this is the category, I want this charge account to be it. So I will be demonstrating the category level charge account using tab and tab. Tab and tab means what? Transaction accounting builder and then transaction accounting definition. This is nothing but a SLA. Uh, in EBIS, SLA is a normally called a class, whatever, the, whatever the will be done only with a financial stream. But in Fusion, sometimes what happens is they are asking the supply chain team to do it. Right? It is a very, very tough task. So we are going to see the tab and tab tomorrow. It is really, really tough. And then I try to avoid and then hand it over to the financials because you may even make a mistake on tab and tab. So tomorrow we will now set up the category based charge account using tab and tab. Actually. I don't want to take it over the half again of it because it has to be continued actually. So I will be uh, doing the continuation of it tomorrow. Is it okay? So if you have understood the what happened, the charge account, fine, asset into asset and asset and expense, expense and expense and expense and asset, fine. Can you put a green tick now, fine? If this is understood, fine, good, great. Fine, Santosh has understood it. <coughs> Srini, have you understood it? Good, great. Srini has also understood it. So if you have understood the, what happens, the charge account, fine, the very many methods of charge account will be great actually. Fine. Tomorrow we are going to see a category level charge account. Fine. That is also a very important one in many industries. No, fine. If this is a category, this account must be hit actually. Category level, category based charge account. I'm going to see it now. And then that too, I'm using it the tab and tab. Fine. Transaction accounting builder and transaction accounting definition. Yeah, tell me. Somebody was. So the setup would be in the same mapping set or is it different? Yeah. Or... We are going to create our own custom mapping set. Oh, and we will be creating our custom transaction accounting definition. We will be creating our custom rules, etc., etc., using tab and tab. Everything okay. will be custom. Now. Okay. In fact, what happens, I am now using all these things as a standard one now. Fine. In many industries, it will not be standard at all. I have now used everything on the standard mapping set section. Fine. It is a middle account sub inventory, and then there is a middle account organization. This is an expense item, expense uh, transaction to a sub inventory, and then expense into an org. So these are all the standard mapping sets. In reality, if you see, financiers will be having their own mapping set for each and every one. Fine. They do not want to see the seeded ones. The seeded ones will not be used with the finance at all in many cases. Right. Okay. So we are now going to see about how to create your own mapping set also. Your own mapping set, your own transaction accounting definitions, your own accounting rules, everything we are going to see tomorrow. It's a very complex one. And then I always say, supply chain team, please don't do it because it's such a complex one. And then if you make a mistake, it will be reflecting on a wrong accounting coming up on your purchase requisitions. And it will be very difficult for you to even diagnose if you make a mistake on the tab and tab. It's not our cup of tea. It's basically a subledger accounting and then it should be done only with the financial team. But unfortunately, some companies are asking, the supply chain SLA, you do it. The financials, the payables SLA, the receivables SLA, the pocket SLA, they will do it. That is what they say. It's a wrong concept because we may not be knowing it to that great extent, actually. SLA, we are not habituated to touch it in e-business. Uh, so unfortunately, what happens, uh, my team in all the projects, my financial team is very strong. 
and so they never allowed us to do it but i heard that from some of my students sir we are only doing it sir sla and sa is dab and dad for a supply chain we are only this this thing it sir <laughs> and see, if you make a mistake you are not responsible the financial team is responsible to the management of fine yeah chara gone coming they only have to report to them because you make a mistake they cannot say scmp has made a mistake no they are supposed to cross verify fine so that happens in many companies actually so you will not learn the tab and tad tomorrow <clears throat> any other questions from anyone we'll also see the position uh, approvals uh, tomorrow fine not coming up no no what is the reason <clears throat> good then by for now and then we will not meet tomorrow morning and then we will not start tab and tab transaction accounting better than transaction accounting definition bye yeah thanks sir